Yeah, get there. I'm just wanting to demonstrate this feature that I've been working on. So I'm going to open up CGO and from here open up a cache. I'm using the DuckDuck Google cache here, which is right near the Google headquarters, but you know, obviously they're all the same. Anyway, we add a waypoint and from here I'm going to click on the coordinates and you'll see that there's now an additional button at the bottom. Clicking the calculate coordinates button brings up the calculator. From here we can specify the format of our coordinates. I'm just going to use the decimal point minutes format and every time I click on a number here you'll see it's now replaced by a letter. At this point we're able to specify values for these equations. So I'm going to put in the value 1, 1 and 1 and you shall see that the A, B, at C at the top here, the last three decimal points on the northerly coordinate is replaced by these three ones that were specified in here. We can use simple expressions in this equation. So instead of just simply having the value one, I could say have one plus one, and I'll replace C here with the value eight, and I'll subtract from that the number five. And sure enough, you can see A, B, and C have now been replaced by the values one, two, and three. Another thing we can do is actually specify free variables. So you can see that each of these equations has been you know, given a capital letter to distinguish it. If we use a lowercase letter in the expression of the equation, you see we get an additional free variable over here. I'm going to give this one the value 8, and you can see that the x here, which represents the value f, which is the last digit on our westerly coordinate, is sure enough, re replace with the number eight. We can, of course, use simple expressions using these variables as well. So I can, you know, add to this the value y. I'll get a second variable over this side and let's make the value of y be, mm, we'll go for negative three, like so. And sure enough, the value five appears down the bottom being the sum of eight and, oops, eight and negative three. As the hint text seems to suggest here, we can indeed use polynomial expressions. So uh, I'm going to enter in the Pythagorean formula. So I'm just going to open up a set of brackets to begin with. And Pythagoras' theorem, if you recall, states that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So I'm going to put in a squared. This little carrot here, this little up arrow, means raised to the power of. So a raised to the power of 2. And I'm going to add to that b. And I'm going to raise that to the power of 2 as well. Okay, that is a squared plus b squared, and then I'm going to take the square root of that whole thing. The way we, sorry, the way we calculate the square root is by raising again, and this time I'm going to raise to the power of a half. Raising something to the power of a half is exactly the same as computing its square root. So what this equation is now saying is that the square root of a squared plus, plus b squared will be used as the value f. At the moment, a and B aren't specified, that's why we've got a little star down the bottom here, but I'm going to specify A as being the value 3, B the value 4, and the Pythagorean triple 3, 4, 5 will indeed give us the answer here, meaning that the square root of A squared plus B squared is indeed the value 5. Okay. Another simple expression I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the value of A and divide it by the value of b, okay? And in this uh, equation, for f, I'm going to reuse the same a and b variables. I'm going to give a at the value uh, and then take the modulus, which is the remainder after the division. That's what this percent sign means. And I'm going to take a modulo b. For the value a, I'm going to give it the um, the equation 9 times by 6, sorry, 6 times 9, same thing, and I'm going to let b be the value 13. And as you can see, at this point we have both a and b used for e here and for f, and we'll get two different values down the bottom here. And yes, just in case you're wondering, I am the kind of guy who makes jokes in base 13. Anyway, from there, I'll just put in a simple value here for D. We'll just give that the value zero. And sure enough, we have ourselves a full result. At the top here, I can now click on the tick button at the top here. And sure enough, that 0, 042 and the 1, 2, 3, sorry, that we calculated before are up here. And we can now save that as a regular waypoint. Thank you for watching.